military is taking advantage of new technology to better train pilots for a fraction of the cost and without all of the added dangers that come with training in a real plane. Lauren Toms shows us how. It's crafted out of items that can be purchased at any big box tech store, and it's used like a video game. But at the Defense Innovation Unit in Mountain View, contraptions like this are being used to train our fighter pilots. To have access to something like this is just a, a total game changer. I'm lightweight, deployable, stick them on an aircraft carrier, you can stick them in a tent in the desert. Alex Horn has been flying massive C-17 aircraft for the Air Force for 10 years, but when he was first training, his resources looked different than they made today. The joke we always say is I had a plunger between my legs as the stick and, you know, maybe a, like a milk carton as the throttle. And you sit there and you close your eyes and you do what's called chair flying. It's a window of opportunity for the military, taking advantage of high-end innovation happening across Silicon Valley and applying it to advanced military training. As long as you make the problem set fun enough, they come swarming and they, and they just love it. It's critical for keeping our military at the forefront of readiness, says former DIU head and Air Force pilot Raj Shah. I was on my first combat deployment to Iraq. I'm flying an F-16, which is an amazing airplane, but it didn't have a moving map GPS. And at 500 miles an hour on the Iranian and Iraqi border, that's something you really want to know as a pilot. As technology was advancing in the Bay Area, our warfighters were stuck in the past. But that same year, I could come back stateside get a, a predecessor to an iPad and for a hundred dollar piece of software know exactly where I was. And so the real question was why do we have such a separation between what I can get commercially and what you can get in the military? That problem was later solved through the Defense Innovation Unit. Created in 2015, it serves as a connection point between private companies and the Pentagon. Their goal is to identify products that could be used by the military and accelerate the acquisition process. So it can take years to actually get the funds. And a lot of these companies around here don't have the time to sit around and wait for that. Nothing can replace the feeling of training in an actual jet. And Horn says the concept of virtual reality training wasn't initially welcomed by pilots. Pulling the G's, sweating, you know, um, just kind of that really high paced environment. Now what we've actually found, if you can make the simulator realistic enough, um, you can really transport the human mind into another world. But it's that boundary pushing innovation that's helping our pilots break barriers. I think if we are going to move the needle and if we are going to have a chance um, in a what we call a peer to peer conflict, um, we need to lean all the way in. Pairing warfighters with the tech world to create a new standard for our military.